One of the largest investment sectors in the entire world is known as the futures industry. This is where we trade the world's food supply, known as commodities. This market is primarily designed around the use of leveraged accounts and can be used for aggressive growth investments. Unlike mutual funds or bank CDs, leveraged accounts come with added risk. But where there is little risk, there is also little reward. One such method of leverage can be found in the commodity or futures markets. Such instruments are used to trade common everyday items such as orange juice, coffee, unleaded gasoline, natural gas, or other such commodities. In the futures markets, we can even trade such things as the Dow Index or the S&P 500 Index. You can trade these indexes through the futures market just like you would trade companies such as IBM or Microsoft over at the stock exchange. Commodities, just like stocks, are traded on exchanges, but with a greater degree of leverage, which reduces the amount of time you must wait for assets to compound. Take a look at the following two charts. At first glance, they look somewhat similar, but after taking a closer look, we realize that these are actually two very different markets, yet they are almost exactly the same. What's going on here? Is this a trick? Not exactly, but there are some very tricky moves being played out here. Let's first take a close look at and analyze chart number one in a little more detail. As a savvy stock market guru, the symbol you would use to look up this market would be QQQQ. You hear the financial television talking heads throw around this symbol almost every day. It's as common in their language as baseball, hot dogs, and apple pie to the average guy. What are the Q's? Well, the Q's are nothing more than a way of trading the NASDAQ 100 index. Oh great, that helps. What's the NASDAQ 100 index? The NASDAQ 100 index is simply a collection of stocks all gathered up, then added together in one chart very similar to a mutual fund or in this case a stock fund. Simply put, it's a composite price of a bunch of stocks. In stock traders lingo, it's known as an ETF or exchange traded fund. Take a close look at this chart. You'll notice that you trade this market just like you would any other individual stock. Take a close look at the most recent move, which started at 36.54 when we received a buy signal from our stochastics indicator. And it ended at 39.92 when we received the sell signal from the same indicator. The profit from this move was $2,620 and the initial investment required to obtain that size of financial reward was $28,281 or 774 shares of the Q's. Now that's a sizable chunk of change, wouldn't you say? But your ROI, or return on investment, was almost 10%. That's not too shabby. Okay, that was boring. Now are you ready for some excitement? Let's take a look at the next chart. What's wrong with this picture? This is exactly the same chart, right? Wrong. This is the NASDAQ 100 mini contract traded over on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange in Chicago. That first chart? That was the Q's. It was traded on the New York Stock Exchange. Take a very close look at this chart. The exact same move in the NASDAQ as the Q's started when our stochastics indicator gave us a buy signal at 1493. And it ended when the same indicator gave us a sell signal at 1624. The amount of profit on that trade was exactly the same as our example before with the Q's. But take a look at the initial investment amount only three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars what's that you say an initial investment of only three thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars on the futures market profits the exact same amount as twenty eight thousand two hundred eighty one dollars on the stock market an almost seventy percent ROI how long did that take fifteen days okay let's look at it from another point of view let's compare apples to apples take a look at this chart. Now what would happen if we invested the exact same amount of money in the futures market as we did in the queues over there in the stock market? 
Let's say we invested $28,281 or purchased seven futures mini contracts. Our profit on this move in this example would be $18,340. That's correct. $18,340 compared to $2,620 in the stock market. Same market, same investment, two extremely different outcomes. Yes, that was still the same 15-day trade, but it reaped almost seven times the ROI. All right, all right, there's got to be a downside to all this, right? It can't be that simple. There's got to be a catch. What's the catch? Okay, you're right. There is a catch to trading futures. But if you can learn to deal with this one difference, then the profit potential can be significantly higher than you might find when trading the same exact market from the stock market side. Here it is. Here's the downside. When trading commodities, you can lose more than your initial investment. That's the catch. You can lose more than your initial investment. Where in the stock market you generally can't. Here's an example. Let's say you invested your $5,000 and you were wrong and the market turned against you. In the stock market or in the queues in this example, the maximum amount of money you could lose would be your initial investment of $5,000. Once the market moved against you that much, you'd be done. You'd be out. You'd have lost your total investment and, well, too bad for you. Well, in the futures market, you're accountable for all your losses, not just your initial investment. So, if you invest the same $5,000 and the market turns against you and you let your losses accumulate and accumulate and accumulate all the way up to, say, $10,000 before you exit, you lose all $10,000, not just your initial $5,000 investment. Hey, want to know a secret? How would you like me to tell you how to keep from losing more than your initial investment? Here it is. Here's the big secret. Don't go on vacation while trading the commodities market. That old technique of buy and hold, that's for the other guy. Watch your trade and when the market starts to move against you, get out. Learn to use stop loss orders and risk and money management techniques and strategies. Frankly, these should be strategies you should be using while trading the stock market as well. Just because you can't lose more than your initial investment in the stock market doesn't mean you should trade it with any less care or concern. Don't know what these strategies are? Or how to implement them? Then it's time you begin your educational trek. Okay, that's it. That's the downside to trading futures. Compare that to the profit potential side and you decide. Weigh the risks versus the rewards and you make the decision. Trading commodities is obviously not for everyone. Consider your financial situation and consider the alternatives. Who knows? It may be right for you.